Friday, mates. Welcome back in. I mean, well, look, the list and play feature is upon us, uh, but also let's let's not beat around the bush. Let's not fiddle with sticks. We're officially in a slump. It's been a long time. Oh, it's been a long time, man. Eh? Uh, the scores have well and truly dried up on both of our teams. Uh, you know, I think three weeks ago I said I'm the best rare player in the world, and here I am, and I f- have forgotten what joy really feels like. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you set yourself you set the bar too high for yourself, you know. Twenty twenty two, Simon wouldn't have would this wouldn't phase you whatsoever. It's basically just another weekend on Sere. Oh, I didn't win anything. Okay, cool. See you next weekend. <laughs> um, but now you know you've had a bit of a, a sweet taste of that nectar. Tell you what, that crack is really Moorish. Yeah. And now you know <laughs> you have one bad week, and it's uh, yeah, pull out the razor blades. <laughs> but yeah, no, not a. God. Uh, to be fair, at least I didn't sell all of my rares to go into super rares and then fail to win a card in the opening four weeks. But yeah, no, that's a good point. Yep. <laughs> now my uh, my funnily enough, all of my like all of these kind of big super rare purchases that I've made, you know, my my Jacob Glesness, my Kieran Trippier, um, they've all done nothing. They've all just rolled out like forties every week. Um, you had one job. You know, I bought Trippier, he went out and scored 100, but that was, of course, before I had a chance to put him in a lineup, and then he's scored, like, you know, 440 scores in a row, including a 45 in a 6-1 win against Spurs. My what? Spurs. So I was like, well, it, look, if the boys are going to get smashed, at least Trippier is going to rack up, like, some assists, right? <laughs> nah, he's just sh- sitting back. He, m- he mustn't even have gone up into, the, into their half. He must have just been sitting back, probably sitting on the dead ball line, just clapping. Yeah, quietly to goals. himself. Five goals in twenty minutes, and not nowhere to be seen, old Kieran. Um, I think that's one of the most Nightmare. frustrating things. Is like, and I mean, that's what makes like stacking even hard at times. Is even in those really good wins, it's about picking the guys that can pick up the points. I mean, I don't want to touch on the Wolfsburg guys too early, but I feel like that's a pretty natural segue <laughs> into our underdog segment for this week. The underdogs. I'm here for underdogs. I mean, they finally did what we wanted them to do. They finally got a huge win. 5-1. Let's go. And we've picked possibly every wrong bloke you possibly could. Oh, well, we tried. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how? so... Today, Junior! Okay, so, look. Here we've got... Look, this is this is a bit heartbreaking. So... 5-1 win. You know, this is like you said, this is what we this is what we played for. This is what we were waiting for all season was just like a dominant Wolfsburg performance. Look, some of our boys did really well. Patrick who has pretty much been pretty much a non-event ever since we bought him. Old Patrick. No, this is Patrick. He smashed in a goal, smashed in an assist in just one in just 45 minutes. He was crushing it. They he was crushing it so hard they took him off the pitch. Uh, Cohen Castiles is making save after save. Um, you beauty. Uh, and then nothing else. I mean, our boy Omar, we brought him in because Jonas, windy boy, the fastest wind in the world. Ah, I am the angry crab of trapped wind. Ooh. He's been letting us down for months. And then all of a sudden they decide to swap him back again. So, you know, just an absolute nightmare there. Windy boy didn't score anything. Omar didn't score anything. Our new signing, Van de Ven, useless. I mean, what was he doing? Well, I'll tell you. Absolutely fucking nothing. And then Maxi Arnold, our boy, Mr. Consistent. I mean, sure, scored 59 points without a decisive, but how did you not score a decisive in a 5-1 win, Maxi? Come on! Uh, and even more devastating is the fact that Castile's is 62 points with a goal conceded. Like, had he kept a clean sheet... I mean, gosh, you're looking at points galore. But, I mean, so I don't know, this Wolfsburg team, man. Even when they win, it just, we can't seem to piece it together. That Wolfsburg pin constantly floating further and further away into the abyss. (laughs) I can only assume, let's have a look at Windy Boy. Played the entire game. He must have had some big chances missed. Oh, just the one. Oh, he missed a penalty as well. (laughs) Oh, my God. You're kidding (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, oh. we got to find the footage of that. That's... Yeah, look. Disappointed! Yeah. 
congratulations, Wolfsburg. A great 5-1 win. I'm sure your fans are happy, but, you know, I mean, we can't really lay the blame on them. It's, it's, we didn't pick the right five, I guess, you know, we need to, we need to really have a good hard look at ourselves. If we want to, if we want to be wearing those pins at some point in our lives, we really got to uh, step it up a bit. I mean, I thought that, you know, Akintola from Toronto FC was the worst striker to ever grace the footballing world, but is Jonas Wind the, uh, the worst striker in the world that just can't score? Have we cursed I think, I think maybe, I think what we need to do is we need to do a, um, and maybe this could be for some good content for next week. Let's stay up. I think it'll probably be like one in the morning. Let's stay up and do a live watch along of Wolfsburg because we've never actually seen the boys. They're always playing at like two in the morning. You know, you and I are getting our beauty sleep, as you can see. Um, but let's do it. Let's let's do a live watch along. I mean, no one else needs to watch along with us. <laughs> it can just be us. But we can give some live commentary, you know. It'll be it'll be riveting stuff and, you know, it'll feel like we're there, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. It will really bond. And maybe, hey, maybe Wolfsburg have been holding back all this time and they're waiting for us to fully commit to become their number one fans and that's when they're going to turn it on. Mm, yeah, if someone just passes a message on down the line, just let them know that the Sorry Down Under boys are watching. I reckon, you know, some of them will pull their socks up. Windy boy, I'm looking at you. <laughs> now, the list and play feature, we'll touch on that quickly. It's been a lot of talk list about... List or play. List or play. Not list and play, quite crucially. Actually. List and play would be, I mean, I'm sure people would be much happier with list and play. <laughs> <laughs> but list or play, it seems quite decisive. But, I mean, I haven't been paying too much attention to it. I know you've had your, your finger on the pulse a little bit more. It kind of seems to be working, though. It seems to have the, the effect that it's been intended for. Yeah, I think as with every uh, Soro announcement, it comes with a wave of, you know, the world is ending, everyone's panicking, it's panic stations. Oh, my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay f***ing calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just f***ing calm down! Um, and then, you know, after it settles in and the dust settles a little bit, it's, uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's not so bad. That's not so bad. We can deal with this. Um, my thoughts on it, I mean, we won't drag on about it too much because it's every so rare podcast under the sun has already talked about it. Um, I think it's, I, I said, I think I said on Twitter when it came out and everyone was having a meltdown, I was like, I don't think this is really that big of a deal. Like, it means that those really premium cards, you won't be able to buy them during a game week, but you just buy them during the midweek. You know, I'm sure, you know, people will work their way around it. Um, but it will create those opportunities where, you know, if you really want someone for an upcoming midweek or something like that, and there's none of them on the market, then all of a sudden, you know, that creates a bit of a, a mini supply and demand bubble, you know, for those those players that people want and need. So definitely means that you can be a bit more strategical with listing your players now. You know, you can look ahead and look at game weeks coming up and going, okay, who are the players that people are going to want, you know, and potentially if you're willing to sacrifice a lineup, you know, you can make some good profit on the secondary market. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I think so. And I think it sort of goes back to, look, I, I mean, we've been critical of Surreal at times of making too many changes and just changing things for what seems like the sake of changing it. But, I mean, we look at some of their major changes over the past couple of months. I mean, uh, the new uh, tier of rewards, uh, the capped modes, you know, there was a lot of sort of uncertainty around how that would actually go. And I think it's been one of the best things for the platform. Um, yep. Just a couple of weeks ago when I um, held on to a, a tier five rare, normally that would mean absolutely nothing. But it was actually great because it was like, look, obviously I'm not thrilled about a tier five rare, but it was like, oh, cool. I actually need a midfielder for my 240 team. Like it's constantly adding to that depth and it gives mm. utility to those players. Uh, and I sort of see the, the list or play option to sort of, uh, sort of fit that mold of there's initial uproar, but they're, they're, they're playing the long game. They're not yeah. Good, right? And I think, I think at the end of the day, like everyone's kind of expecting, like everyone's waiting for this thing that's going to ma magically make prices go back to where they were. People are just completely forgetting the fact that we are in a complete, not just surreal, but like crypto, NFTs, the world, bear market. Like everyone's worried about what could happen with recessions and that kind of thing. And, you know, NFTs have certainly dropped off a cliff. Like until that kind of more general sentiment around this kind of thing, you know, NFTs, crypto, et cetera, picks up, 
you know that that will make a big difference, I think, to Sarez card values because you know one of the the biggest attractions of Sarer is that you can win ETH, you can buy these NFTs that can generate ETH and have utility and all this kind of stuff, which is great. But if no one wants to go near ETH or NFTs, then you know everything's going to be in a bit of a slump. So, but I think I think this will make a big a, a you know, a short term difference, you know, but ultimately we just need some people to start degening into into cryptos and NFTs again and we'll be we'll be good to go. I mean you touched on the lure of Sorare is that you can win ETH and you can win cards. I mean we can't. Um mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be good there. people who are good at the game people, can, yeah. yeah. People who are smart, people who can pick when to play Jonas Windy Boy Wind, when to leave him on the bench, things like that. Um look I think your move into super rare, it was, it was bold, it was brave, it was kind of unexpected. It yeah. <laughs> um, and look, look, I, it necessarily hasn't worked amazing for you so far, you know, with Kerry and Trippier just sitting back in the corner of the, the field while Newcastle goes score five goals. But the one shining light is the cap two forty mode. Now I'm a mm. big fan of the cap two forty mode. I think it's probably a little bit still too hard to hit. But, I mean, you've been getting your $300 from your super rare threshold team, and that's sort of been your saving grace. Yeah, look, and I've had some other wins, I guess, that have come along with that as well. Like, my strategy, and I've been, I have to keep reminding myself of this, is to not go out and buy, not don't, don't spend my ETH on cap 240 players. You know, the idea is try and buy some premium super rares and then win cap 240 players you know makes sense right okay all right that's fine okay okay um but i as as we've just said i haven't had any luck doing that (laughs) but i have had luck in picking up some players that are perfect for 240 that i know you know are kind of due a bit of a turnaround in form so like pablo ruiz great example picked him up uh, on auction. He was one of my um, buy lows a few weeks ago. I actually listened to myself for a change, picked him up for 0.3, I think it was, on at auction, his super rare. His previous two games, he had like a red card and a penalty given away. So like big decisive. So his scores were like 25, 30, but his AA was actually really good. I knew that he was kind of like there or thereabouts with the set pieces along with Savarino. So I was like, yep, this is a player who has a low L15. I know he's what he's capable of. And I picked him up for my 240 team, put him in both weeks. He won me the threshold. I then sold him for double, you know, like two weeks after I bought him. You know, I may regret that. I may wanted to have held on to him. But what? Yeah, but I, I, I think ultimately, you know, if I can make, if I can make 0.3 of a profit, you know, in two weeks, that's pretty good going. Um, I also picked up a Sergio Santos from Cincinnati, picked him up for cheap on auction. Usually just, a, you know, bench fodder, might score a goal twice a season. Um, my thinking was Brenner's going overseas in the off season. I don't think they're bringing in anyone else. Sergio Santos seems to be the guy. And sure enough, he's come in and in both games he's scored a goal. So um, I've actually had quite a lot of luck picking up 240 players directly from auction, <laughs> which goes, flies in the face of my strategy. But, um, but yeah, having that having that um, 0.1 ETH threshold every week has really like saved me from going into a full depression um, after selling all my rares a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the problem with once you sell all those rares, you lose the safety blanket of having the best of the best. Like, you've mm. got very solid super rares, but as we know in Sare, like, you really do have to buy quality because those are the guys you can truly count on most of the time. Mm. Um, and I think you're finding that with the super rares. Um, I think something we want to touch on today, and it sort of links in with your 240 journey, is Cap 240 itself, because obviously I think that's the gateway for those players starting out, people just getting onto the platform. They don't want to dedicate heaps of ETH. Um, and I feel like that's a good way for them to be able to play. And I know when I first started, when you first started hitting threshold, that was exciting. Like you've got these mm. guys and, and hitting that, seeing that ETH come in, that's the real win and that's where they progress from there. Yeah. And I mean, PSG fans and Laird, they um, they hit hit on this a couple, 
a few days ago in their podcast. They, I think the, the title of the podcast was like how to prioritize 240. I think they spoke about it for about three or four minutes um, before they started talking about how PSG fans doesn't like to go outside and you should never go outside. And it just kind of got derailed from there. So I thought, you know, as a listener, I was like, I wanted more. I wanted to hear, like, let's let's talk about 240. But uh, so I thought, let's just talk about it uh, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> as PSG fans, welcome. <laughs> welcome, PSG fans. <laughs> so let's grab that baton. Let's stay on topic. Ooh, burn! And let's talk about some 240s. So, yeah, um, I thought what we'd do is maybe just kind of talk a little bit about kind of what, what kind of sh- players to look for uh, and how to kind of approach 240. I still do think that if you've got the budget, you should go for premium quality focus on all-star rare or all-star rare pro or you know potentially one of the regions uh and have 240 as kind of like a secondary team i don't think you should prioritize 240 as your main thing um just because i think as psu fans touched on before they went off topic um you can't win that greater cards in 240 like you can get the threshold but you can't get those premium rewards that are going to ultimately you know improve your gallery over time so but certainly, I think within a very pretty, especially with rares at the prices they are at the moment, you can you can create a two forty team for quite quite a low budget. So I thought, yeah, let's uh, let's try and create a team. I reckon we focus on America, just because we know that region pretty well. I, I don't really want to go near the Asian leagues at the moment. I don't really understand what's going on there. Um, so yeah, what what budget do you reckon we could work with? Um, just quickly on the Asian guys, Leaky Joe, do you remember him? I don't think Leaky... he's been cited since. Uh, he has been cited, but he's been, I think he got injured. He hasn't been getting any assists. It could be a, a definite buy low. He's still taking all the set pieces for them, so it's coming. Could be a yeah, perfect 240 player. We lasted about one second before I took us immediately off topic. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, well, doal keepers are around 0.2. Point two five, yeah, point two, point three. Pick up yeah. some rares, um, like point zero five now. There, so like maybe point five around about that. That's not too much to ask of someone first entering yep. the platform. Yeah, yep, point point five. What's that in dollars? I think it's like I don't know, six hundred bucks. I don't know. Anyway, point five, point five for rare. I think that's that's fairly. You know, what, what do you win? You win like 0. 0.02. Is that the threshold at the moment? Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. So a full season, you could probably get close to, you could get somewhat close to um, to paying that off. Before All right. We, let, sorry, just quickly. Before we jump into what players you'd want to pick up, for example, for a person like myself, when we talk about prioritizing 240, I'm obviously running out my either super rare kickoff or all-star rare team. Now, Unfortunately, I've got a lack of goalkeepers, and I think that's something that a lot of people if they've got a smaller kind of galleries probably struggle with. Mm. Now, I'm actually in a really tricky spot of do I run an all-star team, a 270 team, or a 240 team just to try and hit that threshold? Because I've got a lot of good guys sitting there, you know, like Zellerayan and, and all these guys who I won't be able to use, but is it better to just, is it safer to play that 240 route? No. It, it would be absolutely ridiculous for you to prioritize 240 again it's it's yeah. nice to hit the, it's nice to hit the threshold and if you're a, if you are an absolute beginner by all means like focus on that to begin with but again you've got superstars there why would you why would you ever prioritize you necessarily have superstars like uh, like this is the problem though is that if i win a t4 that's like the same we would like to apologize for the following few minutes of conversation it's pretty much just two blokes babbling incoherently for a few minutes. It's seriously shit. These guys are twats. Let's get back to the podcast. Enjoy. You know, if those guys. Oh my god, they are still going. Jesus, this is just awful podcasting. We really cannot be more sorry about this. What am I missing here? No, you are missing the crucial element. I am using my best pieces in. Well, this is awkward. I yep. have my three teams. Uh, I've got two goalkeepers. Oh my god! 
so sorry that you want to have to sit through that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I forgot you only had two goalkeepers. I forgot about that. You would have saved me a, a, a bunch of time if you just told me I've only got two goalkeepers. Um, what oh, I'm getting know. at is, yeah, this is where it comes down to where I've got to pick a 270 or a 240 team or an all-star team, you know? Uh, 240, yeah. 270 sucks. Cool. All right, we got there. Well, that was pointless. I mean, if you could make an all-star team that and is, is, yeah. is solid, then I think you should do that because, again, if you if they do pop off... Then you could win a goalkeeper. You can win some ETH, you know, if you've got five crushes that you like. If you've got your super rare kickoff and then you've got your all star rare team that are both like this is you know podium dangerous as they say, then do that. Don't, don't, you know, don't ignore a good lineup just to get two forty. But if you're like, oh, I don't think this team is going to do much in all star, then yeah, go go two forty. Okay, we got there. That's cool. fine. <laughs> Fuck it out. Oh, jeez. I, I reckon I would have punched you if we were, we were this <laughs> It's early in the morning, all right? <laughs> <laughs> when do you want to record? Do you want to record first thing in the morning? Yeah, okay. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's get back on track. Let's go back. To We've gone off topic. God damn you. <laughs> let's go, well, it's kind of on topic, but. Oh, no. Kind of. Right, okay, let's go all right. To 240, we've set ourselves a 0.5 budget. Let's look at some guys that potentially you could craft to make a team that, like, like you said, throughout the full season, you win the odd card. If you hit threshold most weeks, you hit, you'd win that back pretty quickly, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right, well, let's start with goalkeeper because obviously that's going to be where the most, your, your biggest chunk of ETH is going. So, Golden rules, if you're picking a, a threshold goalkeeper, is you just want someone who starts. The temptation is always going to be there to pick up, you know, like a Tim Melia or a Pool Scamp or, a, you know, one of these guys or a, West, a West, Quentin Westberg, these kind of players that, um, that are, um, you know, have a pretty tenuous grip on the, uh, on, the, um, on the job. So you want to make sure that you've got someone who's a starter. So pay a little bit more, get yourself a starter, they probably you can probably get away with an old goalkeeper if you're looking at just you know short term threshold grinding. Um, obviously, not too old. Today is my one hundred and another birthday. Uh, but yeah, the most most important thing is um, is that they start and that they are always going to start. Because we did touch on this last week of beware of old goalkeepers. That's it. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, yeah, old goalkeepers. It's not the not the worst if they're you know somewhat older as long as they're locked in. Um, Thirty eight years old is probably preferable. Yeah, so we want to set ourselves a budget of say, let's go. I think the max we want to pay is if we've got a point five budget, the max we want to pay is point three. Okay. All right, so we've got. Let's go from sending. All right, so you want to do your research. This is where you really need to be able to do your research. Find out what's going on with each of these guys. So, like, likes of Sung Rong, uh, Jung Song Ryong here, uh, you know, you might look at that and go, okay, 0 0.07, you know, starts 80% of games, looking good. Uh, he was dropped last game. So, you know, chances yeah. are you're going to buy him and then he's never going to play again. So, you know, classic, classic trap there. So you want to, if you see a really low... Price on a goalkeeper, that's generally a good sign to just do your research and do a bit more digging and find out exactly why they're so cheap if because they really shouldn't be so cheap. Yeah, if, it's, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. It's like that's it, yeah. So like Burian here, I think he is the starter for them, but he's 39, which is probably pushing it in terms of age, you know. <laughs> that's kind of a little bit too far. Um Talavera, same story. Quite quite cheap, but he's 40, you know, so he's kind of one injury away from just retirement. So you, you don't you certainly don't want that. So let's have a look through McCarthy. Again, Miguel, quite old. Let's have a look at Rodriguez. So Rodriguez pays for Tijuana. Problem with a, a player like this is that he 
Tijuana aren't covered and they don't have cards, so it can be quite hard to find information about them. Uh, you know, all of the Patreons and kind of, you know, play sharpers and those kind of, you know, resources don't often have information on them. Um, because your golden rule is like, especially with goalkeepers, I mean, all players, but goalkeepers especially, it is just set and forget. Like, you do not want any worry of rotation or if there's a number two guy that I know we touched on last week is like, if there's an up-and-coming goalkeeper, you know, underneath them that is eventually going to take the job. Um, I'd even even use, like, a Stefan Fry as an example of that. Like, yes, he's the locked-in starter for Seattle, but, like, the fact that Cleveland's there behind him just mm. leave that little element of doubt. Yeah, that's it. So you can always look at their – if you want to do a bit more digging – um, it, it can be helpful to look at their uh, look at the team and look at their roster. So you can click into the actual team, look at the roster. So they've got goalkeepers. So they've got like a young, twenty-seven year old kind of backup, and then an older backup. So you know you can kind of if, if, if this guy's been getting playing time, then that could be something you could you know pay attention to but look Antonio Rodriguez doesn't score that great but looks looks pretty solid for a threshold keeper you know has a low L15 um, and if he you know keeps a clean sheet then you're laughing as long as he doesn't concede three too often then you know not bad not a bad option so keep him in our pocket um, alrighty so okay scrolling through here we won't, we won't drag onto this too long um, Gil Alsala looks to be a pretty good option. Probably pretty high L15 there, um, but relatively cheap, 0.2. So we'll add him to the list. So we're looking at around that 0.2 mark at the moment, with Rodriguez being the cheapest. Uh, I think if you're a pretty new player and you don't really have, like, you don't do a lot of research or, you know, you don't quite know where to look, it can be helpful to go with, like, an MLS keeper uh, or MLS players in general just because there's probably a little bit more information out there that's not in Spanish um, or Korean. <laughs> um, typically I like to stay away from the Asian players just because they're so you don't you never know what's going on because there's no press releases, there's no press conferences. you can't really you know it's very hard to get information about who's in and who's out. so that's always something to keep in mind. I um, like when I bought a Eduardo who is the captain of Sag- uh, Tosu. And uh-huh. I just re-signed for three years, and we were like, awesome, he's locked in. And then just like the next day, I don't know where, he signed with Yokohama, where he's been on and off the bench for two years. <laughs> uh, so just a, a, a word of warning for anyone looking to dabble in the Asian market. Absolutely. All righty. I'll pick a couple more here. I reckon Pedro Gay is probably a little bit expensive, but absolutely 100% locked in. No one's taking his job. Tyler Miller, hmm, probably a little bit risky. So out of that list, we've picked up uh, Zach McMath, who he did. They did drop him for one game, but I don't think he's. I think he's the locked in starter there. I, I think he may have been sick or something that game because that didn't really make any sense. Um, Gaese, we've got ourselves a Gil Al Salah Al Qadar, and we've got a Antonio Rodriguez. So those are all keepers that you know they're not going to set the world on fire. They're relatively cheap. Uh, and it looks like from all, from all, you know, again, do your own research, but it looks like they are just locked in 100% starters. Now, Alistair, what about defenders? I'm so glad you asked. Okay. All right, so what I like to do when I'm looking for defenders, uh, I think defenders are, I think you want to have two defenders for a 240 team. Um, typically, they're a bit cheaper, and you can typically rely on them a little bit more. Um with 240, you're going to have to have at least two players out of your game week do something. They're going to have to get a decisive or they're going to have to have a big game defensively or they're going to have to, you know, you want to have at least two 60-plus scores in each lineup, really, because you're going to have those players in there that, you know, try as they might, they just can't get above 35. You know, that's going to happen. So when I'm doing, when I'm looking for defenders, I like to go to the player rankings page. Let's go America. Now, if you toggle on the floor price, you can kind of see what you what can you expect to pay for them. Now, we've talked about this in previous episodes, but I want to try and find a player who has good AA. So, if I click on their AA averages, this is this will now list them in terms of their average um, AA score. So then we just kind of go down the list. You know, Godin is cheap, but he is thirty seven. So 
you might just want to like a second guess why he's so cheap. You know, is he in and out of the team? What's going on there? Lissandro Lopez. Now that's definitely one that I would add to this list, uh, even at 0 0.07, which is probably a bit pricey for what we're looking for. Um, but Lissandro is someone who takes penalties for Tijuana, and you could also stack him with Rodriguez. Um, now, not really sure why he's so cheap. If we look at his scores, maybe there's some news that I don't know about. Um, but he's got a dark green in him, and that's kind of what you need. He came on as a sub there. He was suspended there. But look, you know, he's got some dark greens, so 100% Lissandro should be on your list if uh, if you're looking to put together a team. Very 100 capable as well. Okay. Now, Donovan Pines is an interesting one. Pick him up for 0 0.02 at the moment. I'd have to, again, do a bit of research to find out whether he's, you know, about to lose his spot. But his most recent four scores, he was out of the team for a while. He's come back into the team and he's, you know, scored a goal there. But otherwise, he's all 60-plus. So definitely could be a solid option. Charles... Okay, who else have we got? I mean, Yamar is pretty cheap at the moment. Probably want to go a little bit cheaper than that. And I mean, his last fifteen at fifty-eight. Like that's realistically, that's probably too much for a two forty. Yeah, that's true. That's the other thing to to look into. Is yeah, you you don't want uh, you want someone that's got a bit of a lower L fifteen. So let's scroll down a little bit. Let's find some guys. Okay. Dave Romney's got a pretty low L15. He's locked in at uh, New England. Yeah, this is probably this is a little bit more. This is this is pretty pretty tasty. You can see he's got the odd seventy in him. Obviously, he's got a bad game in him as well. But that's that's two forty. That's what you're going to get. Um, but if he can roll out these fifties and the odd dark green, then you know, perfect. And for point three, not a bad old. Locked in starter there for them. Blackman could be a good good shout. Um, again, nothing, not setting the world on fire, but you know, he's relatively consistent with the odd big game in him. So when you're looking for these defenders, are you just looking for centre backs mostly, just trying to get that consistency? So you want to have one centre back, I think, that's consistent. Um, you want you want someone who okay, is just gonna just going to roll out those 50s with the odd, you know, 60 plus if they have a, you know, a big game or a clean sheet, that kind of thing. Walker Zimmerman could be a good option, 0 0.06, you know, relatively consistent. You just don't want those players that are going to regularly get like 30s and 35s. You know, you want them to be, want well, them to have yeah, a pretty good AA. Even, in 240, like if you've got your five guys hitting 50 points, you're there. Like, it's, it's the 35s that kill you. If you can get someone that's 45 to 55 points, mm. all you need is really one person to, to get a decisive and you're, you're well on your way. That's it. That's it. Uh, this guy, Marlon, could be a good, relatively good option. Oh, no, he's probably got a few too many low scores in him. So once you've found yourself a Steres, again, it's not too bad to put a bit of... Um, like cap space behind someone who regularly scores, you know, 50 plus. Astero is probably not a bad option, or that was with a goal. You know, if you if his L15 is 55, but he always gets 55, you know, that's that's pretty handy to have. Um, let's see if there's any of those lying around. Daniel Lovitz is probably a good example of someone that you could pick up for pretty cheap. Takes up a fair bit of cap space, but as a defender, you know, He's got some big dark greens in him, and he's pretty regularly over that 50 mark. So definitely a good one there. So the other thing you can do is to look for your defenders that have um, a high decisive action uh, capability. So again, you don't want you don't want them, these guys to have a high L15 um, because these are typically the players that are going to be very up and down. Um, so you want those guys that are capable of scoring decisives. Um, but uh, you know, take up a relatively low cap space, and these guys are going to either get you thirty or they're going to get you, you know, eighty. You know, that's their, that's kind of their sweet spot. Um, Javane Brown, great example. He's very much rocks and diamonds, but that just keeps his L fifteen low. 
you can see there lots of like 25s and, and, and low scores and then the occasional just massive you know 90 90 or 80 and that's gonna if you get one of those scores from a player then you know you're pretty much well on the way to getting your threshold for that week so you want to have a defender to that is going to roll out 50 to 55 every week and then you want to have a defender that yes he could score 35 but he could also score you know 90 plus um, that's so you want to do a bit of research find out who's if there's any ba um, backs that are taking set pieces uh, because those are just absolutely perfect for for threshold um, because they're always got a chance of getting an assist whether it's you know putting a corner in and someone gets ahead to it you know or you know whipping across uh, in for the forward to put one away so yeah definitely want to kind of find that balance we interrupt this broadcast to bring you a message from our proud sponsors is your game week on the line? Well, here at Goalkeepers Are Us, we always fail to deliver at the worst possible time. Conceding a third goal deep into stoppage time? Just 14 points. Needing just a regular score to hit that 240 threshold? 1.8 points. A chance of winning a card with just your Premier League keeper to play? 5 goals in 20 minutes? 4.1 points. If you're on track for a card and need just a handful of points to get you there, then we'll always miss it by at least 1.5 points. Goalkeepers Are Us, where lower scores are just the beginning. So now we can talk about midfielders. Yes. <laughs> so midfielders are is probably the trickiest position to fill, I think, for for threshold, um, because you do want someone that's going to be decisive, dangerous, but obviously you've got a cap to work with, so they can't be too decisive, dangerous, because otherwise their cap score will be too high. So we can forget all of these guys. You want to look around that fifty to fifty-five mark for their L fifteen. And then we want to try and find some players who, you know, generally have pretty good AA, again, because you don't want that 30 score to screw up your week. You want someone who's uh, got relatively good AA. So, like, yeah, Caceres would be a good option. Um, takes sets for, for New York uh, and has, you know, this season has shown that he's got pretty good AA. You know, he's rolling out 50s relatively regularly. He's probably not going to get that many decisives just because... New York aren't super attacking, um, but that's kind of good because we don't really want him to get too good. Otherwise, he won't fit in our team anymore. I feel like AA is the, the go in 240. Yeah, totally. Roldan, definitely a good option. I think he's injured at the moment, but when he comes back, L15 and 52, um, very consistent, as you can see. You know, He's going to score 55 for you regardless. He's pretty cheap. Uh, he's, I mean, they plays for Seattle, who are crushing it at the moment. So he's always going to be in with a chance, although that might be one that you might need to sell on. Um, Junior Moreno, great option. Plays most games for Cincinnati. Not particularly dangerous, but again, he's just he's he doesn't usually score lower than you know forty or forty five. Um, playing center mid, so he gets lots of AA. Great option for for a threshold team and super cheap you know if you can pick up those players that cost a threshold then that's kind of perfect <laughs> yeah especially in the midfielders like i mean i know you've had some good success with picking guys up but especially in today's market as well like you can pick up these guys who are very solid options for like super cheap we're back in the day these guys would be pushing like 0 0.15 0.2 mm, that's it that's it matan is a good option um you know Kind of a bit, of, a little bit of rocks and diamonds, but plays in a very attacking role for Columbus, who are a pretty attacking team alongside, you know, Zeller. So he's going to have plenty of opportunities, um, and he's relatively cheap, so definitely a good option there. Uh, let's pick some real like, let's try and find some some low L fifteen guys. Um, so you just want to kind of think about, okay, if they've got an L low L15, is that because they're just crap or is it because they just haven't, you know, for whatever reason they haven't latched onto those decisives of late or they haven't, you know, been in the, the best form? Robin Lerd would probably be a good example of someone that, you know, especially if Reynoso ever does come back, <laughs> touch wood, um, he's had a pretty weak start to the season. But those just you know those decisives are in him once they kind of get, get kicking, so... That would be one that I would definitely look at picking up, just because he's, you know, we know you know he's a quality player. 
he has been decisive dangerous in the past. He's just going through a bit of a, a lean patch. You know, Minnesota aren't scoring that many goals. So good example of one. Same with probably Fagundes. I think he's injured at the moment probably for the next five or six weeks. So probably not the best time to pick him up. But Austin have just been rubbish. Um, but we know what he can do. So if you can try and find those players that have got a good history of scoring well, um, but are just in a poor team or they've just kind of had, you know, a rough a rough run. You know, you can see here his L40 is 50, uh, but his L15 is 43. So those that kind of like, um, yeah, he would go like a van. Oh, van is probably not a, uh, a van is too expensive, but <laughs> he'd be a good exo- good example of someone that would be perfect for threshold because it's like we know what he can do. He's just really out of form. Um, Another one that was a great sell high. I do believe Alistair when he was going for about point eight. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we're getting into the real shitters here. So yeah, midfielders is a bit of a tricky one. You, you want those guys who don't score particularly well, but are always in with a sniff of a of a goal or a decisive. That's that's the main thing. You like a player that I own, Victor Wanyama, is someone where he's probably not kind. He doesn't really score well enough with his AA to be a good pick, but he also is just never ever in with a sniff of a decisive. So you want to kind of stay away from those low scoring CDMs. If you're going to get a CDM, you want to make sure that they're getting lots of tackles, lots of interceptions, you know, good high AA with the odd 60 or 70 score thrown in. Otherwise you want to go for those players that are, you know, should be scoring decisives, but are just, you know, can't (laughs) Um, because ultimately you're going to need those kind of players to fit under your cap and, as long as they're decisive capable, that's the kind of main thing to look for. Now, I mean, this brings us on to the forwards, just to mm. keep powering through. Mm. I feel like this is one area where you can get some good options because, as we know, forwards either they score a goal or they don't. So if you've got a guy who's just a bit out of form, that L5 super low, that can really bump down that L15. This is probably somewhere where you can um, take full advantage, I'd say, right? Yeah, I think forward is the one where... There's no, you don't want to be wasting cap space on a forward um, because this is kind of going back to what I was saying. Most forwards, they should be goal dangerous at any time, you know? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but you want those players that aren't scoring all the time because they're going to cost too much. Um, and mostly with forwards, you don't get that huge upside. So there's no point spending 60 points of your cap on someone who's just going to score 60 points every week. You want someone who, you know, if you're going to play score, uh, if you're going to use sixty points of your cap space, you want them to be like capable of getting a hundred. Um, so what I, if I'm looking for a forward for cap, I probably want to go anything under forty five for an L fifteen. Uh, we look at America. I've got a great um, Joseph Martinez card if anyone wants to buy it off me. <laughs> well, the thing is, Joseph Martinez, If I mean, he got benched last week, and that is obviously not good. But if it – look, he's the first thing that shows up. If if he wasn't benched, I, like previous to last week, he was the perfect Cap 240 player, even though he cool. wasn't scoring, because it's like it's Joseph Martinez. He is a proven goal scorer. He cannot score a goal to save his life at the moment, but it's like – is he just that, you know, we know with forwards they go through purple patches. Is he just that one goal away from, you know, unlocking, you know, the Joseph Martinez we know? Uh, his low cap space, he sh- you know, he should be close to scoring a goal every week. <laughs> but I probably wouldn't be picking him up because I can't guarantee that he's going to start. So you want players who are definitely going to start. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Taxi Fontas would be a great option, probably a little bit pricey for our budget, um, but, you know, he had those run of poor games, so he's got a low L15. Um, you know, he would be perfect if he wasn't so expensive. So now we're looking for those players who play 100% of games but are just, for whatever reason, a bit out of form. Tyler Boyd would be a good one because he's had has a low L15 because of where he was playing previously, but since he's been at LA, he's been pretty solid. Playing left mid, so should get some really relatively decent AA, so I'll add him to the list. Now, Aguirre, sh- I'm pretty sure has been starting. Mm, comes off the bench pretty regularly. That, not that's, that's after. a good point, Alistair, is that like, with the, the budget forward, 
Mm. That's the good thing about what it was. The good thing about Martinez until last week was I was like, okay, he's you know he's a proven goal scorer. He's going to start every week. It's yeah. those guys, those forwards, where you're like, are they going to start? Are they going to be benched? Because if they're off the bench, they get twenty five. That's what can kill your two forty lineup. That's it. So yeah, knowing that they're going to play at least sixty minutes plus is is a big win. So what I would do is, yeah, update this. Uh, you can actually change the percentage of games started um, on the left here, and that way you can kind of filter out any of those sub duds. So there's not that many. <laughs> uh, Brian White, yep, yeah, great example. Yep, yeah, add him to the list. He's pretty awful. Like I've watched him play many times, and God knows how he's a uh, MLS level striker, but. Every now and then he's going to get lucky. He's going to get a tap in. You know, it's going to happen every now and then. Um, K Cow, great example. Yeah, I definitely would pick up a K Cow at that price. Um, you know, again, I think he's playing on a pretty dangerous team. He's K Cow. He's only nineteen. I think there's only upside for that. You're you're a big K Cow fan. You have been for ages. I'm a big K. I mean, he was one of my first like under twenty three buyers that just like took off, and you know, I sold him for a massive profit, and so he's always got a soft soft spot in my heart. And he's he's got the, he's he just hasn't got the skills. I think like he's crazy quick. He's big. He's strong. When he scores a goal, it's always like an absolute banger. I think he just doesn't have that like kind of football smarts, you know, to be in the right position at the right time. But I think that'll come as he gets older. So. Yeah, long term, I'm a big Cade Cow guy. I reckon he'll do really well. Cade to the moon. Cade to the moon. Maxi Romero, uh, he's been starting lately and scoring. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, they're a bit bit low on the ground, the old strikers. But um, I think as long as you can find someone who starts every game and is, you know, has somewhat of a chance of scoring a goal, that's the main thing. The other thing you can do is you can... Um, all right, we'll we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Um, Prato, yeah, a little bit tough tough to find um, <clears throat> the old forwards, but I think really, it, it, it it comes down to if they start, they're in a somewhat attacking team. Look, they've got a chance, you know. That's it. Yeah. So to summarise all of that, uh, waffle um, goalkeeper, someone who one hundred percent starts. Try not to pick someone that's too old. Uh, if their price seems too good to be true, it probably is. Do your research. When you're picking your defenders, I would pick two defenders in your 240 team. I would pick one who is a centre-back who has good AA but not too good. <laughs> uh, you want that guy that's going to be rolling out 50s, 55s, just every week. You know, If you can get someone that's just a, a green line, perfect. Uh, and then you want to pa <clears throat> pair them with a left-back or right-back, preferably one that takes set pieces um, but doesn't, necessarily have like a good AA game. So they're very decisive heavy because those are the guys that are going to bang you in the 70s and 80s that you need. Um, but their they're, they're L15 should still be relatively low because, you know, when they don't get a decisive, they're not that great. Uh, midfielder, you know, you want a, a decent base AA, but not too good. You don't want like the superstars. You don't want to waste a superstar player in a 240 team. You want those guys that are going to be in and about, you know, decisive, capable, uh, without being like, you know, decisive, a decisive every week because obviously they're going to cost too much. Uh, and then forward, ultimately, yeah, low L15. You want someone who starts every game. They're always going to have a chance of scoring a goal, but you don't want someone who's, you know, scoring all the time. Or failing that, try and find a forward that has really good AA where you can just rely on them to get. 45 to 50 every week with the occasional 80. Yeah. And, and I think just building on your depth as well, having the pieces because, you know, it happens, not to us, but sometimes your players do really, really well and they'll make themselves out of the bracket that you can fit them in. Yep. Having those extra pieces, those plotters, those pieces of uh, shit <laughs> sitting down in the gallery, having them there that they can stand up and, and fill in the void where needed. Yeah, so if I was looking at those players we just highlighted, obviously you know, we, you know, I would do more research than that if I was putting together a team, but let me get my calculator here. So if we go with our um, our defensive stack of, where are they, of Rodriguez. Let's see. Okay, he's 0.17. 
and then I reckon we we stack him with Lopez, who's probably got a bit too much of a high. Oh, yeah, might be a bit too high there actually. That cap. Um, so what's his All right. Simon? If you keep track of the cap, so we're at forty five. Okay. For Rodriguez, I'll keep track of the price. All righty, let's let's pair him with a Romney. Okay, so he's got fifty cap space. Yeah, now let's pair him with a, let's go a Javane Brown. He was a bit more decisive, dangerous, bit of a, a left back I think he plays. So he's got a 53. Okay, we're at 0.229 at the moment. Now, as for our midfielder, I'm going to go with Junior Moreno. I think he's nice and nice and cheap and he's never going to get, he's never going to be so good that he's too expensive for us. So he's cap space 52. Takes us to point two six three. You've got forty gems left. Forty. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, so let's find our forward, and we're well under budget here. So I'm going to go with K Cow. So plus point oh six three. Perfectly. There you go. Okay, so that's a that's a two forty team. Struggle with the old maths, though. So. Oh, I just yeah, it's just having it's you know having one of those mornings. <laughs> all right so that is a threshold team for 0.33 uh obviously you want to try and go and pick up some depth as well because they're not going to play every week uh, particularly with Liga mx you know they i think they're about to finish their season actually for a couple of weeks so um obviously you need to work it out so that you've got them all playing at the same time but there's a good example of you know 0.33 how many weeks is that that you need to get the uh, threshold 16 weeks and you've paid that off, so not too bad. And the odd card in there as well. The odd card in there, exactly, yeah, that's right. Oh, there you go, we've nailed it. We are the best at Sorare. <laughs> Got <him! laughs> right, we, we managed to somewhat stay on track for almost a good half an hour there as we, we nutted that one. <laughs> I'm proud of us. <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful for people. I know that was probably, like, yeah, probably dragged on a little bit, but... Um, it takes it takes time to find these players. Uh, obviously, we did a very short version there, but hopefully that helps people just kind of get an insight as to how to find them, what to look for. That was the short version. They're all thinking, "Ooh, burn!" <laughs> <laughs> and they would be no, right to is, think that it is actually like because that's the thing. Like that might be a bit of a drawn out process for those that have been on the platform for ages, but for those that are starting out, you know, they they don't necessarily know those. Features on Sarai data. I know when I didn't, like, mm. you were like, go scout on Sarai data. And I was like, I don't know what to look for. Like, what are the, the filters you put and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully for someone who's new to the game, um, trying it out for the first time, that is somewhat helpful. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, I think it's time we make some money. I think we do. I think you've, you've touched on the, the bargain basement boys now. Let's talk stocks. Let's talk markets. Let's talk guys we can buy and flip and become millionaires. I let the stocks decide my move. Fuck! Fuck! Damn it! Wait, is green good? Green's good. Okay, never mind. <laughs> That's it. All right, so this week, I, I think I promised this last week, I um, said I would uh, give this uh, buy low, sell high um, a bit of a European flavor. Uh, we're coming to the end of the European season. The, um, for a lot of, for a few teams, it's actually the season is over. Um, so I thought I'd just highlight a couple of players that I think are guaranteed to continue to start in 2020, in the, well, no, later in the year. You are so stupid. <laughs> in the new season, they're guaranteed to start. Uh, they're dirt cheap at the moment because um, because their season's almost over. Um, and I think if you've got a bit of patience, these are a few players you could pick up that are going to do well next season. So... The first one um, is someone I've had my eye on for a long time and I've never pulled the trigger on and I've always kind of regretted it. Uh, let me share my screen. Boop, 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 boop. Whoa. It's Jeffrey Harrymans. You are hairy like animal. Go, baby. Very good. He's got a great name. <laughs> he plays for our boys, Mechelen. What's not to like? Yeah, I mean... Oh god, some of the Belgium kits are really are awful, aren't they? Yeah, that one's Last not not very good. Um, 
But look, you can pick him up for point zero three at the moment, which is an absolute bargain. I've been I've been flirting with picking up his super rare for a while, and I may still do that. Um, I mean, if you look at his his scores, he's he's pretty consistent. Like those are really good scores. <laughs> Um, he took over from set pieces from our boys Rob Schkoos, um earlier in the season. So he takes all corners. He takes most free kicks, um, you know, much to the chagrin of uh, Nicola Storm and Rob Schoos owners, which was us up until recently. Um, and, yeah, he gets good AA. Uh, he's locked in to, to continue to play for them. He's signed through to 2025. He starts every week. I think... I think at the start of the season there was kind of like some uncertainty as to whether he was going to be a starter, and I think that has just meant that no one has bought him all year because <laughs> um, his price has never really spiked above, you know, not not a lot. So definitely one that I probably will pick up for next season. They start again in July, so it's not that far away. Um, and, yeah, for the price, he's, he's an absolute weapon. Have we got anyone else? Any other buy lows? We do. Uh, this one you'll appreciate uh, because he's a man very close to our heart. Jules Van Klimput. Oh, Van Klimput's boots. <laughs> Van Klimput's boots. Now, be aware, be very wary of the very fact aware. that this man is injury prone. Guys, my bones are getting squishy. But she actually yeah. He, yeah, he... I don't know if he's just unlucky or what, but you can see there he's he spends a lot of time in hospital. Um, wow. So I think that's kind of factored into his price at the moment. He's the price of a threshold. Um, I guess the upside you're looking at with Van Cleanput is that when he does start, he's a monster. Like 86 just all around. You know, he's always capable of an assist. You know, he scored one off the bench there. Um, I remember that game. I think that won me a card. Lots of green scores. I mean, his only yellow score here is the one where he got injured. <laughs> so he scored 7.36 AA in 24 minutes. So he's just an absolute weapon. You know, interceptions, tackles, move, you know, he gets the ball forward. He's very attacking. Uh, he's just like, he's the dream threshold player, really, because, well, he won't be um, once he starts playing regularly. But, yeah. he's you know. He's a dream, he'll be a dream threshold player come next year, you know, if he's been out for however long. So, Jules Van Cleanput, you know. The weakest ankles in all of Belgium. That's it, yeah. He needs to just spend the next, you know, spend the off season, you know, eating some tubs of yogurt, getting his calcium up, you know, doing some yoga, getting getting strong. But if he can come back and stay fit, absolute weapon. I love it. I love it. We're, <laughs> we're here for you, Jules Van Cleanput. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one is this one's a little bit more on the expensive side, but I for what he uh, for what he delivers, he you know is an absolute beast. This guy was one of the most expensive cards on the platform not too long ago. You I can was gonna say, wasn't he like an ETH? Yeah, so you can see, yeah, he's one point one point two ETH not that long ago, uh, and he's since just dropped way down. He has had a, f a few bum scores since he came back from injury. Um, I think he got in suspended there, but like, I, I mean, look at this. Like, this is this is a guy who absolutely crushes, takes all set pieces for one of the strongest teams in Turkey. Um, I guess the only risk is, risk is that he might get a move away, um, but at the same time, he signed with them through to twenty twenty four. He hasn't been that great the last couple of games and he's been injured, so maybe that'll put a bit of a dampener or any kind of transfer move. Um, and the other benefit is that when he plays for Greece, which he will be in June, um, so you know, looking for some utility in the off-season, he'll be playing for Greece. And when he plays for Greece, he destroys 164. Yeah, so he's a... Um, Absolute weapon for Greece. Look at those Greece scores. <laughs> Greece for the next, uh, the 20, what is it, 2026 World Cup. That's it. I've got chills. Just... And they're multiplying. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Wow. I cannot. <laughs> That's shocking. I cannot believe that he'd point two. That's, he was literally like a star award a month and a half ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There you go, tier tier two, high tier two. Yep. Wow. 
I'd be very happy with that. So, I mean, look, if you're looking for some, and this is probably one that you could look at, Simon. Again, you know, if he gets a move, he could he could die. Um, but for someone with your gallery, like if you could if you could slot this guy in next to an Ottomendi, uh, next to a Tom Hay, you know, get yourself a good striker up front. Could be could be very dangerous. Very okay. I love it. Love you just got to stop buying forty-year-old uh, A-League goalkeepers, and you'll have some Ethan. You can go and do it. Do you reckon someone will accept my trade of a Danny Vukovic for a <laughs> kind of previous <laughs> Maybe, maybe. All righty. Um, so that, those are some buy lows. Um, I'll I'll keep looking up for some kind of European bargains um, for next week, um, but I think there's heaps out there at the moment. Um, and as for the flip side, as for some sell highs, um, so sticking with the Europeans for a second, uh, Florian Wirtz, um, he's the golden boy at the moment. Um, everyone loves him. He goes for an ETH in rare. He's super rare, just sold for like five ETH. Um, he's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Um, he's only 19. He's crushing it in the Bundesliga. Like what's not to like, I do believe though that he will get a move to somewhere like a Chelsea or some Premier League team and he will be bench fodder for a couple of years so long term 100% if you're looking at investing in Sarer for the next two or three years pick this guy up he's probably going to be one of the best players in the world don't get me wrong but if you're looking for so rare utility um, I think his price could take a bit of a tumble uh, as, as early as June you know transfer window he gets a big move, and all of a sudden, he's rolling out twenties and thirties every week. So, and we've sort of seen that Bundesliga players don't necessarily adapt too well to a step up to the tougher leagues. Yeah, obviously Haaland um, being the perfect example of that. Oh, I mean, he's done all right. Uh... <laughs> Haaland obviously is the uh, is the exception to the rule, um, but yeah, you're right. They often don't don't do as well. You know, you look at your Kai Havertzes, those kind of players players. Um, you know, Kai Havertz at one point would have been similar to Florian Wirtz, an amazing card to have on Sorare. Um, but since then he's become a bit of a joke. So if you've got a Florian Wirtz, now's probably the time to sell him, uh, unless you are, you know, ride or die Wirtz all the way, uh, which is not a bad thing to be. If I had an ETH to throw around, I probably would do it, but I don't. <laughs> Wirtz will make you squirts. Um <laughs> Next one, uh, Christian Espinoza. Um, don't get me wrong, love a love a bit of Espinoza. Um, love love San Jose. Love that they're finally putting some wins on the board. He's been scoring goals for fun. He's crushing it. You know, look at that, amazing. And he he was definitely a buy low not that long ago. Um, but I do feel that this is probably unsustainable. Um, I don't think he can continue to score goals the way he is and. He started off the season with some good AA, but more recently it's kind of dropped off and he's been just banging out. He's scoring a goal, but only scoring 60 points. Um, so I just feel like if San Jose, if something, you know, if they get a couple of injuries and they revert back to being the San Jose of old, um, you know, all of a sudden you could be stuck with a, you know, a 30, 40 merchant in Espinosa. So I just feel like he's probably overperforming at the moment. Uh, and if you can get 0.153 for him at the moment, and then, you know, you could probably use that money a bit better, I think, in terms of picking up someone who's a bit more a bit more solid. Yeah, especially MLS guys. If they're not a big name, if they're not an actually incredible player, there's a good chance they'll just go back to being fine. That's it, yeah, going back to being fine. <laughs> He's the definition of fine. Uh, and the last one here is Daniel Gazdag. So I actually watched... Watch the Philly game. Now that I own a Jacob Lesnar, so I was like, "Oh, I'm watch a bit of watch a bit of Philly." So I watched him over the weekend. Um, I mean, he scored great. I think he scored. I don't know. He he got an assist. Um, and I mean, his scores are great. Everyone loves a bit of Gazdag. Point three. You know, he's more expensive than Bacasetas at the moment. Um, but he just didn't look that good. Like I watched him, didn't look like he was really that special. And I've realized that pretty much like 80, 90% of his goals lately have been uh, penalties. So a bit of a penalty merchant, and that's not going to happen every week. There seems to be quite a lot happening lately. Um, and you can see that when he doesn't score a pen, you know, 
He's not that amazing. Lots of yellows in there. So I just think, again, for that point three, you could you could you could do a lot better in terms of finding yourself a mid. So I think Gazdag's probably a bit overhyped at the moment. And they've got Los Angeles. Oh no, okay, they've got. I was gonna say they've got Los Angeles next. So if you're looking for this game week coming up, it's probably not gonna be great. No, no, that's it's it. Probably the, the the least helpful contribution I've ever made to this podcast. <laughs> oh, well, they've, got, they've got LA next. Uh, the game this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he, may, start, he may not score a goal. I started speaking and I was like, this is the most pointless thing I've ever said. Uh, Fuck yeah! Cheers, bro! Note to self, let's stop doing podcasts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop doing podcasts. I think, should we sort of wrap it up there? We've we've gone over 240. Uh, we've had a, a, a brawl. Midway through the podcast, um, you didn't put your listening ears on. We've resolved that issue. Um, I'm not even going to talk about Podium Dangerous this week because I don't want to get into that argument with you again about which team I'm wrong again. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, look, Podium Dangerous this weekend. I mean, I think the less expectations we have, the better. I think we need to start, um, you know, we just need to start just getting back to playing for the love of it because God knows we're not going to win anything. Curse you, America. Curse you. <laughs> All right, mate. Look, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Let us know if you've got any good uh, threshold players we might have missed. Um, some Tell me if I'm too boring. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready to hear that yet, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All righty. Best of luck on the weekend. May, may the gods shine their light on your gallery. And may they lift you up to great success. All right. Love you. Love you.